comment cards. And so I'd like to uh, call up Mrs. McSherry to the podium. And actually, while you're coming up, I will take a moment just to have us introduce ourselves around the table here. Um, I am Josh Shulman, chair of the planning committee. Dave Albritton, uh, council city of Clearwater. Deborah Pig Sanders, St. Petersburg city Thank council. You. Vince Cox, Pinellas County. Hello, I'm uh, Brad Miller. I'm the CEO of PSPA. And, and thank you, uh, Mrs. McSherry. The uh, floor is yours. Um, I just, it's been really difficult since the system was changed to the automated um, computer system to route routes. And I am, I'm, I'm just going to tell you some of my experiences um, of what I went through. Um, the first one was the first week of the service, which I, what happened is I got two destinations to the same, um, to the same place. So I called and I said, I'm only going to this destination, not the other. And um, for some reason, my return from that dis destination was Medellin Middle School. Um, I called, you know, I thought we had a half hour where, we, where they gave us our rides and got us there on time. They, PSTA always finds people, the provider, if they don't get us there in a certain amount of time. So I thought the half hour meant something. But I'm finding that the half hour is just to schedule trips because what ended up happening on that day, um, and this was with me calling Bonnie Epstein, um, they didn't pick me up again till 4.35. I sat there for four hours and I didn't get home till 5.05. .05. Now Bonnie Epstein was like, Oh, give us some time. It, you know, it's the first first thing of the system. Give us some time. It'll be worked out. I don't care. Nobody should be sitting anywhere for four hours. To, I can't transfer safely unless I'm at home. So I wasn't able to go to the bathroom. You can imagine after 10 o'clock in the morning how that went. And so, and then I went, uh, another trip um, to the mall. Um, I was supposed to be picked up between 4.45 and 5.15. Like I said, I thought, well, let me back up. So I called and spoke to one of the call takers about another trip I had to church. I said, I missed half my service, and she said, well, you need to make your trip earlier. And then I said, but it was an hour and a half on both ends of the trip, either waiting or being driven around. And she said to me, she said, I, that's about how long it would probably take you if you rode a regular bus, and I know I know you like care right and that's what you're used to. So that was, so then going back to my trip at the mall, I was supposed to be picked up. Obviously the schedule doesn't mean anything, but I was supposed to be picked up 4.45 to 5.15. I got a message saying I wasn't gonna be picked up till 6.08, so I called and they said they're running behind. I, and so I'm like, I don't understand this. And I called one of the supervisors. Um, I don't forget her name. I forget her name. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm tired of this. I said, um, I said, we had wheelchair transport for so many years and we had, bad service, especially at the end. And we had good service. And, and when 
I told her when First Transit took over, I was so relieved. I'm like, they were doing good, they were getting us there. But now, because of this new computer system that tries to, that tries to make our system um, a fixed route bus service, it, it, they don't allow the dispatchers to do anything. PSTA makes all the decisions. And what this lady told me was, it's, it's, again, okay, so sh she told me that, you know, it's public transportation. And three times during my conversation, that was her answer. It was public transportation. Uh, so what is, I'm like, but so what does that mean? That, does that mean I expected too much with Care Ride? Does it, that I expect, I thought that they were, that they had it to give us good service. But now that PSTA is running everything, it, it just, it, it's awful, it's awful. And I'm told it's public transportation. And then, um, Ms. Sherry? Uh, my time, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I gave you, I gave you some extra time because I thought your feedback was, is, is important. Um, and I appreciate you coming out. And I know that we're going to be talking about this in greater detail today. And so thank you for, uh, thank you for your comments. Something has to change, please. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to also call up Mrs. Young for her three minutes. Good morning. Good morning. I was here last month um, with more of my personal complaints with PSTA access. Um, in the meantime, I talked to several of my colleagues for dialysis, and they decided it was my fault and the fault of the lady in the office. And they've included problems that they had. Um, briefly, um, this person wrote, I'm, I'm three minutes late, I'm in a wheelchair, no show, they mark her as no show because it took her a while to get downstairs to her, her residence. Um, another person, they always have excuses, so much in line. I've learned that myself, I've called in and one person tells me this, I call back 15, 20 minutes later, I get another story, I mean, I sat at Morton Plant Hospital for two and a half hours waiting on a ride that was on Jeffords. So that was a li little ridiculous. Um, sometimes late, then I call them and they leave me as a no-show when I'm outside waiting for them. They lie to me. These are, these are actual comment cards from our residents, our users. Um, and it's not just dialysis. I was actually at the mall this week and this lady walked up and said, are you waiting on a care ride? I said, no. She said, well, if they come, I have to go to the restroom. They were supposed to pick me up at 1.30. It was a quarter to two. She came back at two, she called and said, oh, the driver came, but they didn't tell him what side to pick you up on, so he left. So the lack of communication between the dispatch and the drivers is also causing we end up taking the lady home by three o'clock. No one has showed up yet. And we sit there and talk on the phone. We, you know, if you have elderly sitting there with groceries, <coughs> that's depending on you. Um, I really wish that you would allow yourself to be undercover boss and ride on some of these rides. There's this, I'm not sure if this is even a normal ride, but I want to say to 
Shelby Jean. I don't know who's in charge of the logistics of this team, but the logistics, I was told I was going to be picked up. They had to go, this person had to go way out with me in Rocky Road to pick someone else up, and then come back and drop me off on Omerton Road. Hmm. There's some logic in that. And they said, your computer systems are great. I've worked with computer systems, but computer systems put in what we as humans put in. So we need to be more alert and more caring about our systems. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Um, can, is it possible for you to leave those comment cards? Yes. Um, actually, if, if we could, Clarissa or Rachel, or if you could grab those. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So uh, moving on to our first action item, we have the uh, minutes from the February 18th meeting. Looking for a motion or any comments? I'll move to approve the minutes from February 18th, 2022. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Cox, a second from Commissioner Albritton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Thank you. That motion passed unanimously. And so um, we now are going to be moving on to our access roundtable, which would hopefully be um, starting to uncover and discuss some of these uh, other items that were brought up in public comment. And uh, did you want to introduce us at all? Yeah, if I could. Okay. Good, good morning, uh, Planning Committee. And Thank you, thank, thank you for coming to the meeting today uh, and expressing those comments. It's timely because this is exactly what we're here to talk about. I really want to express thanks to all of our partners who joined us here uh, today um, from First Transit and uh, United Taxi, and then the folks that are gonna be also participating uh, virtually from out of town. Just as a background, um, for why, why we scheduled this, I want to thank our Commissioner Vince Cox, who, as we all know, is very passionate about PSA access, having uh, previously worked uh, for Care Ride for a number of years. Noting that it, on our, on our, at our finance committees, on the monthly report and on the data that's uh, provided to the PSA board at the board meetings, the, the level of complaints has gone up, um, appearing to have gone up dramatically um, over the last several months as we have transitioned into this new system. So, at la at, as you might recall, at last uh, board meeting in February, Commissioner Cox requested that we have sort of a discussion about uh, specifically what might be going on, what, what, what are the plans to improve it as uh, Mr. Ms. Um, McSherry uh, spoke about, we have a new software system um, that we're implementing and, and whether that, that can help us solve some of these issues um, and certainly not, not create problems uh, in scheduling all the rides. We're up to now about 27,000 rides a month, so it's about 1,000 rides a day. Um, that we're talking about here uh, between all of our providers that you're going to hear from today. And with that, Bonnie Epstein is the director of our mobility programs at PSTA. She has served in that role since prior to uh, the launch of all of our new system. But since last July, sort of the whole world of PSTA access has changed. We have a new, we have not just one contractor, we have, have six that you're gonna hear from because Care Ride went uh, belly up, they, they left. And so we had to get a new contractor, contractors. We also had to get a new software system to manage instead of just one company, now six. And so she's gonna talk about how that is and then you're gonna meet the uh, CEO of um, the software, uh, company that, that's working with us um, from SPARE and, and, and hear from the other members and I'm sure we'll have so a good discussion with that. So, Bonnie? Awesome. Uh, thanks, Brad. Good morning, Chair Shulman and Planning Committee. Uh, my name is Bonnie Epstein. I'm the Director of Mobility Services. So as Brad said, we're here to talk about our PSA access service, mobility on demand, some of the changes that we've had 
um, over the past year and recent months. Um, some of the challenges that we have, what we're doing to address those challenges, and then what we're planning for the future and moving forward. Do we have the slides up? Uh, if we go to the next slide and then the next one. Awesome. So um, as you know, last year in July of 2021, uh, we brought on new contractors for the access service. So we have First Transit with their subcontractor user, as well as United Taxi. Um, our contractors for the mobility on demand service include Lyft with their subcontractor wheelchair transport and Uber as well as United Taxi. Those contractors have remained the same uh, since we started the Mobility On Demand program. We have gone through a lot of changes with the access and MOD service uh, in the past few years. Uh, just a few short years ago, when we had uh, CareRide as our, our access contractor, uh, riders were only able to book pre-scheduled trips with just one provider. CareRide did all the service. Today, uh, we're able to offer our, our riders scheduled service as well as on demand uh, and riders have the choice of many different providers um, all the providers that I just mentioned um, and so we also uh, brought on a new software contractor like we mentioned in December of last year um, uh, they've started with pre-scheduled access uh, reservations and scheduling and dispatching I will move forward with them uh, to include the MOD service later this year so I have a lot of people joining me in person today, um, both in person and on Zoom. So I have Nick Cambus here from United, uh, Kat, Tom, and Russ from First Transit. Uh, and then on Zoom, we have uh, Christopher and Quinn from Spare, Jess from Userve, and I think Paul Davis uh, from Lyft is here as well. Awesome. So if we could go to the next slide. So, uh, you know, as we've been talking about, we have had some issues identified. Um, when we launched the service back in December, you know, we had a, a quiet period around Christmas, but then really started to see uh, some issues arise in, the, you know, in January. Um, we, we were really seeing some issues with late trips, uh, more, more late trips than we're really comfortable with. And that's led to a lot of the riders missing their appointments. Um, and you know that's not acceptable. Riders have also given us feedback that their trips are not routed efficiently. So that's leading to customers being in the vehicle longer uh, than they need to be and you know, feeling like a little bit like a package, uh, trips not being very efficient. Uh, we, we take these issues very seriously and we've been working with the spare software and our contractors pretty much every day uh, to address these issues and I think we really have a good plan moving forward. Uh, so with that, I'd like to pass it over to uh, First Transit that's here today uh, to give their perspective on uh, these issues. Hello, my name is Tom Tibbetts. Uh, we've had uh, weekly meetings, as Bonnie mentioned, with, uh, with SPARE, and the issues that we have addressed and identified are to improve the routing, which um, will help to lower the, the number of late trips. Um, in addition, um, scheduling driver meal breaks. Right now it's a manual process and it's hard to predict when um, a client or a next trip might come over since we're not doing the dispatching. So they've, um, uh, spares agreed to move forward with um, helping us uh, schedule the, the driver breaks along with um, improved reporting to help uh, provide data and improve efficiency, along with um, uh, providing some daily metrics to uh, basically give a report card, a daily report card of, of our service to DSP. And we've also engaged our uh, aviation and operations support team. First uh, Transit is one of the only organizations that offers this, right. and internally we have some folks that have worked very intimately with Spare Labs. Um, so they are partnering with them to see what they can do to help us along to achieve our common goals. Awesome. Uh, so before I, I pass it over to the SPARE team to talk about, you know, um, our, our action plan moving forward, I, I do want to mention, you know, why we uh, chose the SPARE team to be our access software provider. So last year, uh, at about this time, 
uh, the board approved a contract with the Spair Service. And what I had talked about is we were really looking for a very robust, innovative, and uh, dynamic software for our PSA access and mobility on demand services. Um, you know, one of the core things that we are looking for is the pre scheduled access reservations uh, and then automated on um, scheduling and dispatching. That's a very complex uh, piece in itself. Uh, so something that we were really looking for. But in addition to that, we really wanted to bring in uh, a provider that would incorporate our mobility on demand service uh, into the same platform. So have pre-scheduled service and on demand in one platform. Um, in addition to that, you know, we were also looking to have our eligibility process brought into that same platform, as well as really, really bringing our software into the 21st century so we could have uh, you know, rider notifications go out, um, have riders be able to schedule on-demand and pre-scheduled trips uh, through a rider app, be able to check on their trips, um, and as well as through a web portal. So, uh, you know, after looking at all the proposals, we really felt like the Spare software was, was what we were looking for and, and could incorporate all of these innovative and very difficult things um, into one platform. So, Christopher, all yours. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, thank you, everyone, for bringing us to this. My name is Christopher. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of Spare, um, based here in Vancouver, Canada. Just uh, want to take some time today to explain some of the things that we're seeing from the software side of things that we can do. So obviously, you know, the, the PSTA team and the First Transit team and the rest of our riders are working hard on what they can do in order to improve the PSTA access program, but I wanted to take some time today to explain what we are doing to improve it. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? Uh, yeah, first, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about kind of echoing some of Bonnie's comments on how innovative this really is. You know, it's really, it's really around like building this PT access program and all of the mobility on demand programs into one consolidated platform. It is world, uh, it's world class work we're doing here. And it's the first time this has been done on a global scale when we're building so many providers, we're building six different providers into a seamless integrated platform. And so far, since we, uh, since we kind of got rolling in, in December, we obviously consolidated access from two platforms uh, to one. It used to actually be run in two different technology platforms at the same time. Uh, so we consolidated them to one and, and launched that in December 2021. We uh, replaced the completely manual user trip import process with a full end-to-end -end technology integration in order, order to make that a super seamless experience. We obviously also streamlined the Bay Area Metro trip import process to only take five minutes and without requiring PSTA staff. And we rolled out a comprehensive new uh, customer notification system. So the, for the first time, uh, customers are now getting text messages uh, around you know, when, their, when their trip is gonna be there, right? So they're first getting one 24 hours before the trip, then another one one hour before the trip, and then at the vehicle's arrival in order for us to start reducing some of the no-shows that we've seen historical throughout the service. We're also looking at a pretty good on-time performance in February, so 93%. We're actually seeing that ticking upwards. I saw some incredible on-time performance metrics from last week. Um, so we're seeing some, some good progress so far. Next slide. But obviously, as, uh, as uh, some of the people mentioned here during the, during the um, public comments, there have obviously been some issues, and we're not, uh, we're, we're not looking away from those either. We're working extremely hard to fix them. So currently, the way that we're looking at solving some of these issues is first and foremost, focusing on how can we improve the customer experience as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> since... Um, since uh, around July 2021, there has been quite a bit more um, complaints from customers coming into PSDA Access Program. And that, this has kind of continued 
in more or less the same trend since uh, since uh, Spare was got involved in December. And now we're starting to see this actually starting to go down significantly as of March. So customer complaints is still very much our, our priority concern here. So some of the, but beyond that, we're also working on how can we make backend improvements to help the first transit teams about being more dynamic in the driver schedule, driver break scheduling, their reporting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, some of the some of the priority challenges that we're looking at doing right now is making sure that uh, all of the scheduled trips um, are booked into the future and making them fit within a reasonable time frame. We want to make sure that we hit all of the flexibilities that are set by the by the PSD access program. Uh, you know there are service rules within this program, so we want to make sure that those are adhered to as as much as possible. Um, booking all will call or real-time trips within a reasonable time frame is another problem um, that we we're currently working on. Uh, some unaccepted user trips being scheduled outside of their 30 minute window. Drivers sit sometimes sitting idling without trips and sometimes long deadhead times. Manual driver break scheduling and manual reporting processes. And obviously there's a slew of other improvements that we haven't listed here that uh, I'd be happy to go into further detail on. Next slide. So um, to kind of cater to some of, uh, some of these challenges, we've actually put together what we consider an all-star all internal team to work on this. It consists of 10 software engineers, four product managers and designers, our uh, chief technology officer, our chief uh, operations officer, and, uh, and myself, the, the CEO of the company. So we've uh, started working on some of the challenges here um, in around February, and we're already starting to really tick off some of the boxes on, on solving these higher priorities issues. We call this project internally Project Manta. That's why it says Project Manta on the slide here. And here's kind of our stage one uh, to do's basically, where we've all all around these, the, the kind of the common thesis around this is we're both improving the optimization of the system. We're, we're learning from the trips that have already happened in the system in order to make optimizations going on into the future. And we're also, bringing in more control to the dispatchers because sometimes uh, some trips cannot fit within the flexibility that is set by the PSTA access service. So there may need to be some override in those flexibilities. There just simply isn't enough vehicles on the road to take care of those trips. So here's kind of a, a laundry list of some of the things that we're looking at doing. You see some checked off boxes here already seeing some improvements. As I mentioned, we're seeing uh, customer complaints being record low in March. So uh, things are looking positive, but we're definitely not slowing down. Next slide, please. Going on to stage two, this is where we're gonna be working on some of the more kind of backend issues, uh, backend challenges that, we've, that uh, we've identified together with the PSTA and First Transit team working on more dynamic driver breaks, uh, scheduling, improving some of the reporting to make it more customized towards how they would like it to do, and some more control in terms of what you can edit in terms of trips. Next slide. So in terms of defining our success for what we call internally Project Manta, it's really around reducing rider complaints or customer complaints to at or below the long-term monthly average. It's actually something that we're looking to trending towards doing now in March, but you know, obviously it's all about keeping that same momentum going. Keeping on-time performance percentage as 95% plus, you saw that we did it, uh, we, we were able to achieve 93% in February and things uh, definitely from at least seeing the numbers from last week, things are vastly, vastly improved even from 93%. Also obviously around making sure that uh, uh, all trips fit within the 30 minute window for, for uh, additional trips that may be including bringing on some additional fleet supply into the service and, uh, and also working on making dispatch and driver operations much more efficient with 
more controls and driving more manual intervention, again, more dynamic driver brakes, et cetera. And our timeline for targeting to achieving all of these goals is in the next three to six months. Next slide, please. And then moving, uh, moving forward, uh, it's what we call PSD phase, access phase two. So this is really where, where we're building some of the mobility on demand programs into this integrated system. We're bringing on integrations to provide us like Bay Air Metro, uh, Lyft, wheelchair transport. So that's gonna be really making sure that the MOD programs is also part of this and make sure that we have a, a seamless system that can uh, combine trips in all aspects to really drive a much, much better rider uh, and customer experience that, uh, that they have uh, beyond what they've seen historically. It also marks uh, the release of a new customer application or rider application. So for the first time ever, uh, PSD access customers and FMOD customers can book, modify, and cancel trips entirely on their own without needing to contact the call center and get real-time updates from for their trips. Getting real-time updates on their trips is something that we see as an incredible improvement for, for uh, compared to the, the to the historical customer experience of this service where they're going to be able to see where the driver is, they're going to get uh, real-time vehicle locations and make sure that they can meet the driver in the best place possible and, and track, their, track their ride. We're also working on vastly improving dispatch and reservations experience by hosting everything under one platform, kind of what what uh, Bonnie talked about uh, earlier, and really putting the customer experience in the hand of the rider and improving usability across all of the spare run mobility programs by PSD. Next slide, please. Yeah, so thank you so much. I'll, I'll hand it over to Bonnie now. Awesome, thanks Christopher. Uh, so you know, like uh, Spare was mentioning, we're, we have a lot to look forward to uh, the rest of this year uh, with all of the improvements that Spare is making uh, for pre-scheduled access service, as well as, um, you know, bringing on all of our mobility on demand providers into this uh, spare platform. So again, having that seamless experience for riders. Um, you know, talking about all of our, our contractors, I, I wanted to give a, um, some of our access and MOD contractors uh, a chance to speak to um, our, their partnership with PSCA, as well as their partnership with Spare and the progress that they've uh, made so far. Uh, so uh, Jess from User, uh, if you're able to speak to our, our partnership. Absolutely, thanks Bonnie. Uh, good morning everyone, my name is Jess Mooney. I'm the Director of Client Services at Userve. I've um, been partnering with First Transit and PSTA since the change back over uh, the summer of 2021. And I wanna share just a few items relative to users' experience uh, with your program uh, and the integration with Spare Labs. You know, the API integration with Spare went very smoothly and through that, we were able to execute trips through the platform within the expected timeline. Um, and as was mentioned earlier, the full end-to-end -end integration successfully replaced the manual trip import process, um, as well as processes that required um, emails and phone calls for cancellations or other trip-related transactions. So um, while we do have some things to do uh, to work on to improve data collection uh, and reporting on our end, Spare has been con in consistent contact with us on improvements uh, to that end. So, you know, all of this said, I, I would really like to share that the innovative solutions we are working towards with PSTA and with First Transit truly do support um, an improved rider experience overall. And we've seen that um, and seen how technology enables this with our platform. So Bonnie and the team are, are truly forward thinking with integrated solutions, all of our teams uh, and technology can come together on in the daily operational delivery of safe rides that, that are uh, high performing and on time ultimately. So um, for when all the teams, when a platform's automation can administrate a significant part of the overall ride execution, it can create significant leverage for user teams, first transit teams, um, PSTA teams to, to focus on the ongoing delivery quality and the execution um, and oversight that ensures safe on-time rides. So 
Um, the integration with Spare Labs gives First Transit and PSTA direct insight into everything that is happening with our trips in real time, which is really exciting. Um, and we are looking forward to continued collaboration with First Transit and PSTA on innovative solutions with fully integrated, their fully integrated partner. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jess. Uh, I, I know we've talked before about uh, how much our riders like the user service and uh, uh, the drivers. They love getting the text messages about their rides. And I know the API integration that you mentioned uh, definitely saves a lot of time on the PSA reservation side. I know First Transit uh, has been really appreciative of the API, so there's not as much manual work as you described uh, what we used to have. Um, so speaking of API integrations, I'd next like to pass it to uh, Paul from Lyft to again talk about their uh, partnership uh, with us as well as their partnership uh, with the Spare software. Hi everyone, um, I'm Paul Davis um, and I'm the Director of Transit Partnerships at Lyft. Um, we've been working with PSTA on innovations for PST P PSTA access through the Mobility on Demand program since um, back in 2017, actually, under the FTA Sandbox grant program. Um, and since the FTA Sandbox program, the, the PSTA team has been at the forefront of innovation and redefining mobility for access riders. Um, but I, I would be ris remiss if I didn't say that with any innovation, there were some bumps in the roll road as we rolled out Lyft um, in the program as everyone adjusted to the new technology and service model. And even as we at Lyft made tech improvements to better meet the needs of the program. But if you fast forward to today, um, Lyft is a core element of the access program that is beloved by riders and is fulfilling, as uh, Bonnie's slide show, the, uh, the highest percentage of trips under the program. And the, progr the program has matured into such a success in its innovative approach. If you could repeat the last 10 seconds, Paul. Oh, did I cut out? Uh, no, we lost audio, I think, here. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know where you lost audio, but I'd say uh, fast forward to today, and Lyft is really a core component of the access program that is beloved by riders and fulfilling a good percentage of the trips under the program. Um, and the pro program has matured in such, into such a success that at industry conferences that Brad and Bonnie and myself attend um, that you know, all three of us are repeatedly consulted by other agencies that are eager to bring the innovations that PSTA has done um, to their mobility programs and to their properties. Um, we're really excited to be part of this program and uh, to have a chance to work with PSTA and the SPARE team on the second phase of the new uh, technology integration um, that will integrate Lyft into the SPARE platform uh, with much of that work well underway. Um, I, I'll, I'll note finally that as with previous innovations, I'm sure this one will experience, um, you know, its bumps and its hurdles as new systems and solutions are implemented. But based on the previous results that we've seen, a more reliable and popular system for PSTA riders awaits them, and, and one that I'm sure many others in the transit industry will be itching to follow in the future. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Uh, and last but not least, I wanted to give uh, Nick from United Taxi a chance to uh, talk about uh, their experience as a partner of PSTA with both the access service and our mobility on demand for, uh, service. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, my name is Nick Canvas. I'm uh, the president and CEO of Bay Area Metro. We own and operate a lot of the taxi services in, in Pinellas County. And I've had uh, the fortunate opportunity to work with PSTA for decades um, on many different programs. Um, we have been a part of the MOD program for quite some time. We just recently, just recently uh, joined the uh, the team on the access side um, with the exit of Care Ride. So we feel very fortunate to be a part of it and partnering with PSTA and working with with Al Burns and Bonnie and the entire team. Brad is is, is always a a wonderful experience for us and we feel like the flow of information has always been great. Um, as with any new software, there has been some challenges. Um, on the MOD side, you know, with going initially, it was, uh, we had some challenges which we, we, uh, we overcame. Um, and with Spare, we've had our, our, we've had our challenges. But we're looking forward to an API which, which interfaces our software that we, which we utilize in our in Pinellas County and, and uh, to provide services for thousands of riders every single day, along with the, uh, the 
despair platform. Um, and I think you know what we're looking forward to is how is that going to affect all of the programs, right? How it's going to affect the MOD programs, how it's going to affect the access programs, because there's different guidelines for these. But it certainly makes sense to have everything under one platform that PSCA is able to manage. So we look forward to being a, a long-term partner with you in, in, in delivering these services. Yes, uh, thanks so much, Nick. Uh, we, you know, we're also really looking forward to having an API connection uh, with United. I think that will uh, be able to allow us to bring uh, United on as an MOD provider, again, having all the services uh, under the SPARE platform. But I think that'll uh, improve our connection uh, for the access service as well. Um, we'll be able to utilize that API for both the pre-scheduled access trips as well as the on-demand trips. Um, if we could go to the last slide. Um, you know, everything that we've been talking about with this presentation, uh, all the improvements that we're making and our big vision uh, for this year, uh, you know, to put in the pre-scheduled service mobility on demand, our uh, access eligibility process into one platform is really to improve the rider experience. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we're really excited to be able to offer, hopefully later this year, um, riders the ability to book their trips through a rider-facing app as well as a web portal. Um, you know, if riders don't want to book their trips uh, through an app, they can also uh, have a, a, a way to check on their trips. So they don't need to call in and check to make sure, you know, did I book the right destination? Is it the right time? They can just log into their rider-facing app and check on their trips. We're also really excited about the uh, ability, again, in the next few months to offer uh, the ability for riders to pay for their trips with a credit card through an e-wallet for both pre-scheduled as well as MOD service. Right now for the access program, riders can only pay for, uh, for trips with tickets, prepaid tickets, or cash. And we know a lot of riders would really prefer uh, to pay digitally with a credit card. And one thing that we've already rolled out that I really has think, I do think has improved the rider experience are the rider notifications through text messages. Um, just this past Saturday, I was uh, speaking with the Pinellas Council of, Council of the Blind, and you know everyone was really positive about the notifications that they've been able to receive. And the riders that hadn't gotten the text messages yet, they said, oh, can you check my profile? Can you make sure I'm getting the, the text message? I want to make sure that I get those too. So, Again, we're, we're really excited about where we're moving. We know that there are things that we need to work on, but we have a plan to move forward, and we really think this is going to benefit the rider and bring a lot of uh, benefits to the whole service, and, and again, bring us into the 21st century. Um, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Bonnie, um, and thank you all for being here. <clears throat> um, I'm glad we're having this conversation. You know, it's important that we uh, are able to deliver a high-quality service, an on-time service. Um, and, and do what's right for our residents. Um, with that, are there any questions? Commissioner Cox. Yes, can we on there, my friend? Thank you. Um, hello, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for everyone being here today online. What I'm, I'm here for is I want to bring <coughs> up our board members to date where we are exactly with this contract with Spare Labs and how it's operating right now. Here's the timeline. November 26th of last year, we approved as a board Spare Labs to be our provider for um, our IT for our mobility program. The, com the um, contract commenced on July 1st. October 1st was set to be the delivery date of service. Uh, that became delayed by Spare Lab because it, it wasn't ready. So what happened, PSTA utilized their current dispatch system, Route Lab, to try to integrate with what we had and it wasn't working. And it, there were delays, there were massive delays. That's why Miss Young is here, that's why Miss, um, yeah, Bob McSherry was here as well. And, but this is ongoing because, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain even further here. So that being said, PSDA called back um, Framware to assist those two months when Spare Lab, from October to December 10th, when Spare Lab did take over this, this um, 
dispatch of it. So those two months at work, when it went back to, um, and that's what Ms. McSherry mentioned, she was so excited because you got a company that's purchased 52 brand new vehicles, it has the capacity, it has the ability to do a better job than Care Right did, but Care Right had a better dispatch system is what it boils down to. So now, from December 10th to today, today, spare, and I, I would like First Transit to elaborate on this, but if a ride gets ready on, um, that's off the queue, meaning, meaning that, that um, Spare Lab had, Spare Lab presets the route to the, to the next day, it's totally preset with no changes, there can't be changes, meaning a dispatcher sitting there watching vehicles go, can't, if a ride's not ready, they don't have the ability to manual change it there because it's all preset through <laughs> Spare Lab. And mind you, this contract was supposed to start working on October 1st of last year, and now we're on December 23rd. First Transit still does not have the ability to dispatch rides like it did before meaning somebody gets ready, they call up, there, there's nothing First Transit can do. So I, I really want that address, and I don't believe this can go on like Barb said any longer, where there's going to be these delays. Um, I, I, it, I'm just bewildered that we, we were using a service that what was it not known that this wasn't fixed route, this was paratransit. Paratransit, it is fluid. It's like Mr. Canvas's business. If somebody gets ready, you have to be able to get a dispatcher to get there to get it. He can do that with his own service right now, but I don't believe you're affiliated right now with the spare lab dispatching of your vehicles, am I correct? Access program, yes we do. But not on the MOD program yet. Yeah, okay. So, so my, my question, I guess, will be to First Transit, tell us how it's going when a ride gets ready. If I could have one of you answer that. A ride gets ready, what do you do? Uh, that's totally uh, falls under the reservation agent. The, the client calls the reservation agent and basically states that they're ready to be uh, picked up, uh, maybe they weren't ready before, or maybe they're ready early, and then the reservation agent tries to, or does schedule a pickup as soon as possible for that client. Um, that's, that's basically how it works. This dispatch, um, we just supply the vehicles and the drivers there to, to, uh, to transport those clients. Okay, but then that when when that reservation gets that, do they contact First Transit and say, or do you get some kind of electronic documentation on this? How does how does that go when somebody gets ready that's not in the queue? Meaning, yeah. Th okay, go ahead. I I could speak to that as well. When uh, when riders are ready early, or there's any changes same day, uh, the riders call us, our, our reservation agents. And we have a, a chat function that we have with uh, First Transit. So, you know, that's going all day with this rider's ready early, this rider's ready early, and then we hear back from First Transit if they're able to accommodate the early pickup. In a lot of cases, they are. If a, the rider's ready pretty close to their pickup time, a lot of times we'll just say, hey, we'll, we'll get them at their scheduled time. If they're ready hours early, most of the time we're able to accommodate an earlier pickup. Okay, but again, this could be much less onerous if it wasn't going through so many hands and so on and so forth. Once a dispatcher knows, just like a cab company dispatcher knows, somebody is ready, there should be an ability right then to be able to change a route and change the driver, and that ability does not happen right now. And I'm, I'm flummoxed with it because we're, we, this was supposed to happen October 1st of last year, and now we're going almost one year on this contract and it's not working. And what we're hearing is, well, it's gonna get better. And that's what I hear every time when I, I address this. And it's not getting better. And 
that's the fact. It's just not, it's the fact. It's not getting better. We hear it from the clients. We hear it daily. We see it in complaints. And um, we're paying $2 million more a year for First Transit, PSTA is, than we did for Care Right, who operated at a 98 to 99% ability with a vendor that could actually allow them to dispatch the trips. So we're shooting for a goal of 95%, which really, and that's an industry st standard. We always were ahead of that industry standard. And um, I'm not buying it, is all I'm saying. I'm not liking what I'm hearing from Spare Lab, and it's going to get better, and that we're going, and we, hey, eventually it will get better, but it's, it, it's not getting better right at this moment. And that's important. To me, that's important. That's important to the people that take their time to come here to write comments saying what's going on when they don't really know when they're going to get picked up. And I'd like some answers. I mean, not, not that it's going to get better and it's going to happen March 18th. Or, well, I don't even know what happened March 18th. But I know somebody can't call up and say, hey, I'm ready now and know really when they're going to get picked up. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to give First Transit another chance to, to respond to that, but we, we are able to accommodate earlier pickups um, and, and on-demand changes as, as the day goes on. We, we do have really good communication, I would say, with First Transit. Um, I don't know if there's anything you guys want to add. No, Tom had basically covered all of it. Yeah. Okay. So, so if someone gets ready, is it an easy process for you guys to go get them? No. You may have a van going right by there, but is it a very easy process, yes or no? That's my simple question, to get a van there and get people in? I would defer to the local team. Uh, as Bonnie mentioned, there's, there's times where we can accommodate if a driver uh, let's say he's getting near the end of his shift and is on the, on the way there. Um, the system, the software will anticipate that and assign the driver. Um, nothing really falls on the local operations to route the driver. The, the system determines that. Um, we can assist by um, extending a driver's shift and delaying a meal break and you know it'll it'll work under that concept so okay. um, those kinds of things we can do but it's not a matter of pushing a button and saying and clearing a ride and saying that no, we can go get this one instead right thank you and and I, and I just want to mention another thing that my own personal experience I was going to get a haircut a month, it's my last haircut I got, like a little over a month ago. And there was one of the access paratransit vans at the, where I was getting the haircut down at University um, Publix downtown. Mm -hmm. And I knew the driver, I'd known him a long time, and I was walking out, and he goes, hey Vince, and I go, hey, how you doing? And he's just sitting there. And he goes, I, I have to tell you, he goes, Vince, number one, I'm a taxpayer. He goes, number two, I've been here a long time working. And I remember when I started my shift around nine o'clock and I would work about eight to nine hours and I would, con I would do 12 rides in that period of time. And that's because there was a fluid kind of dispatch that could schedule that and not just a preset route. He goes, I'm now doing six. And mind you, under our contract, we're paying for that driver's hours too. We don't pay by the trip, we pay by hourly for these drivers to be essentially inefficient in sometimes. And, and again, I'll maybe sign these hearts. I want to sound like Josh did earlier. He goes, some things you may not like that you're going to hear from me, but you're going to hear those because of we're overseeing this. And it's important that it gets done and not tomorrow and not in a month and not in two months from now. So that's really what I have to say about it. And if you would like to take it from here, you can go ahead, Bonnie. Sure, you know, I acknowledge that we have uh, issues that we need to work through. The inefficiencies, uh, giving our dispatchers more manual control, those were things that uh, Christopher went over in Spare's portion of the presentation. 
Uh, I know it, it feels like we can't get there fast enough. Um, the, the improvements that Spares made to date really help uh, us on the reservation side be able to fit more trips in. So we slowly have started to become more efficient with packing in the trips more efficiently. And you know, I really feel like within a few short weeks, it's, it is almost April, that we will start to see things become more efficient. Uh, you know, Christopher mentioned the live optimization as well as giving the, the dispatchers more manual capabilities. Um, I'm, I'm happy to you know, keep in contact with you uh, as often as you'd like about the improvements that we're making and I really think in a month or two we're gonna be seeing a very different picture for the access service. Okay, that, that's optimistic. You know, it's not acceptable to me because we've paid this company, we paid them I believe back in July for their first year of service. Essentially, there's been no real service performed when it comes to being efficient with delivering this service. We have a, a excuse my hand motions, and I'm not Italian, but uh, Nick, no offense. Or, <laughs> I'm not sure. To make a long story short, um, it's got to get fixed. It's got to get fixed now, and we can't just keep kicking a can down the road and say we're going to wait. And that's all it, it boils down to. And, and and I, I have asked my colleagues on this board to please support this, um, support that we signed into a contract almost a year ago, and we paid for that contract in advance, which I believe, well, I know the amount of the contract, $1.6 million for five years with an option for the CEO to extend. And I believe the first year, am I not correct, that we did pay a little more because of the startup costs and so on and so forth? Is that how it works? What did we pay? Can anybody answer that for me? What did we pay the first year to first uh, yeah, for the spare um, labs for their services for this year? Yeah, we paid for uh, one-fifth of the contract amount, I think, plus uh, $20,000 for implementation. Okay, but it really hadn't been implemented because we haven't done, and mind you, let me you know stop here, or not stop here, but we haven't done what, they haven't done what they said they're going to do. It would be all over all the mobility departments. It would be all inclusive and it's, it's not, we're not there yet. Yeah, so. um, if I may, uh, and thank you, Commissioner Cox. Sure. I do wanna make sure we have other folks to jump in on the okay, conversation yeah. and we can definitely come back when I okay, want this yeah, to, go ahead. Go uh, ahead. to move along. And please don't quote me to me, um, that's okay. okay. I, won't. Um, I know, uh, both of you had a, a comment. I know uh, Commissioner Flowers was, was first. Yeah, uh, Brad, you were trying to say <coughs> something when she was speaking. Did you want to speak to her before I go? Or I, I just wanted to, I want to acknowledge Commissioner Cox's concerns. It is a concern. I just wanted to clarify one issue that he, you brought up a couple times. I just want to, it was not the decision of spare to delay implementation. It was my decision. Okay. We, we, it was, we were launching a brand new contractor on July 1, and I got a call from Mr. James Bradford at like six o'clock in the morning when he was hanging out with Miss Pat DeGray over there. They, they could not, uh, they could not use route match. And I told Bonnie and uh, Christopher and Spare, it was my decision to delay implementing Spare until we could get the first transit okay. new contractor up and running for a period of time. So that that was not on okay. them. That was, okay. that, that, that was totally me. Okay. And they really have not started. They, they did not start based on our, our timeline. Not, not, not delay that they couldn't do it until December. Right. I, I just wanted to clarify that, um, that it was, okay. it was, it was a timed out system. So they've been working, we, we launched the start of the, of the new software just in December. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, thank you, Brad. Thank you for that clarification, and thank you, Commissioner Flowers, for capturing that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Mr. Tibbet? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I had your name right. Don't don't be fearful. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I, I, I could barely see the wires in the way, and I didn't want to okay. call the wrong name. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, you you have enough drivers in order to complete the task that's been assigned to you thus far as it relates to all of the combined components. So that's through um, United Taxi, Lyft, First Transit, Uber. You have enough drivers. 
Yes, we do. <clears throat> okay. And what I'm understanding is that, and Vince, correct me if I'm wrong, the issue is not with First Transit and whether or not you can provide the service. The issue is with the timeliness of either picking up or once dropped off to pick up to deliver back to whatever their destination is. You're so, correct. Right. So I, I will say, and thank you, Brad, for saying that because I was, I'm glad you corrected that because I really was about to get on spare <laughs> for um, – not having their processes in place and ready to go. Now, even though that was your call and your decision, and I'm so glad that it was caught, um, I do think that when we're uh, implementing contracts, especially of this size, mm -hmm. and the way that technology is now, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you submit your bid, mm -hmm. you start prepping a few things, not a whole lot, but you start prepping a few things so that if you win your bid, you are then ready to go. Mm -hmm. So even even though you made that conscious <clears throat> decision, which is the best decision because the systems weren't talking to each other, and that's what we have to do sometimes. Right. We have to improvise. I still believe that SPARE should have had certain things in place mm -hmm. and ready to go. Um, not push it up against the grain so that it was so close to the start date of the contract so you had to push everything back. So I... I I am a little concerned about that. I know when we were talking about this, I was super excited because when um, Lyft and Uber was brought in, I thought, oh, that's going to increase mm -hmm. our service delivery time because when we were in D.C., we, you called um, Uber. They were already, it was like three minutes, and they were, boom, yeah. right there. In a big city as busy as D.C., we walked out, and the, the ride was already there. So I was really excited about that, but if it's not, if the way that we are looking at setting our trips is not helping us with service delivery times, then we need to really machinate that <laughs> and get mm -hmm. on that. Um, I understand waiting a few minutes, you know, and traffic in our community is getting worse. Mm -hmm. Used to be I could get anywhere in about 15 minutes. That's not so right now anymore. Um, so I do understand our clients having to wait. But I'm going to take at face value what has been presented to us over a, a, a period of time, 30 minutes, an hour, especially when it's a medical appointment. Um, that's, that's a bit long. That's, that's a long time. So what I want to know from the representatives with SPARE, um, what I want to know is, uh, because I do want this to be on a time frame, I don't want us to be talking about this next month. What I would like to know is where are we right now based on the presentation that's been made for us today and what is your anticipated service delivery times or range and then um, I would like to ask, I don't necessarily want everybody to come here, but I would like to ask for a report back to us that shows improvement, no improvement, you know, yeah. just some numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, out of 175 rides, we were on target with 75% mm -hmm. of them. And we were not on target with 25% and a few reasons why. You know, um, I, I really like what I saw in here that there's going to be that call, um, the call staggering times, especially the call saying we're out here because that way a person would know um, if they got time to run to the men's or ladies' room or if they're running behind. I really like that part. Um, but I also think that having that information come back to us will hopefully let us know what areas we need to try to tackle um, and to clean up because I don't want us to forget about this. I want us to, and when I say talking about this, I don't mean I don't want to talk about it. I want us to have solved or worked towards greatly cleaning up where we uh, may not be um, delivering services so well. Um, so that's what I mean by that. Um, and my other question is, on slide nine it had um, reduced rider complaints to at or below the long-term monthly average. What is the long-term monthly average? Uh, for complaints? Um, 
Well, we actually just had a discussion, and I can share with the board, the full board. We just had a discussion about that at the finance committee. Um, that the we're we're seeing increased levels of complaints now. Actually, it started increasing on July one when we started when we lost care ride and started the new contractors. We also started charging fares for the first time during the pandemic, and complaints went up. And I'm not sure if it's timeliness or that they got or the fare or you know or exactly what happened. But during the pandemic, complaints were incredibly low, uh, very very low. And uh, like two per month. Now, again, 27,000 rides, 20, 25 complaints total. Um, and we, which is unacceptable, as, as we've heard. So I, I don't want to make light of it. But if, when you look back before the pandemic, we were up in like the 20s per month. So we're, we're still looking at it and, and going to try to target that metric. I, I'm not sure how to deal with the pandemic yet, but we'll, um, I, I know that uh, Spare had that in their slide as a goal right. to establish a, a reasonable goal to achieve and to get the, get the complaints down, I would think. Um, but again, and maybe you don't know what this is, somebody should, what is the long-term monthly average? It's got to be a number. Not saying what you You've already said we had 27,000 rides, 27 complaints. But if you're going to reduce rider complaints to add or below the long-term monthly average, there's got to be an average. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what's the average so I'll have something to compare it to. So is it our long-term monthly average? Is it SPARE's long-term? Because this is their presentation. Is it SPARE's long-term monthly average? Or is it the industry standards monthly um, average? So that's what I'm trying. So maybe they can figure that one out. And then my, um, my other uh, concern is it says fit the vast majority of trips scheduled and will call within a reasonable time. So if they have not already provided that, they should be providing some parameters about reasonable time. What's reasonable for me may not necessarily be an industry reasonable standard. So is it, um, if it's a scheduled trip, is it that um, your your aim is that you will be there um, on average, like what our industry standard is, 95% of the time, or is it lower? Um, and for will call, will that number be different? Because will call means you didn't have an appointment, right? Mm -hmm. So that may be longer, but I just want to know if we will have something to measure it against so that um, if we're holding <coughs> them accountable, then I can say, well, we said the will call standard was going to be 45%, and we're at 48, so we will meet any, you know, our goal we want to improve, or you know, vice versa. So I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just a number person. When you have the vagueness, that that doesn't give you anything to compare it to. It doesn't say that you you're providing or improving your service. Um, it does say the timeline target for all of these goals is three to six months. I would like to see us. As far as um, the timeliness for picking trips up with the concerns we've heard, if we can pull that out of that timeline target and, and provide some parameter, I would like to see that. I wouldn't want to wait three to six months to see. I know we're working towards it, but I, I wouldn't want to wait three to six months to see that piece improved when it comes to timeliness for fares that we're dropping off and our scheduled time for pickup. Um, and perhaps they can also work something out. So if the guy is on the opposite side of the mall, he's calling dispatch or somebody yeah. before he or she leaves. Um, and um, not just leaving because that's, that's kind of rough. So thank you so much for allowing us to extend the time. Thank and you. thank you for the report and thank you all uh, for being here. And Spare, thank you for being uh, on the call. Thank you, Commissioner Fowles. Uh, Commissioner Fig Sanders. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to try to go through um, mine quickly. I was taking a whole lot of notes and a whole lot of minutes, and I drew 
um, concur with what I've heard so far. And again, thank you so much for the report and for those of you um, that are here to address this issue because one of the main um, concerns that we have is customer uh, satisfaction. And as I took notes, I'm just gonna highlight some and may have a question here to what they've already previously been asked. And one of the first things that I wrote down was um, when the person said that one of the dispatch response was, but this is public transportation. What does that mean? We're in the business to provide high standards in public transportation. To be, so to use that as a response to a customer's concern, I think is warranted um, additional research and investigation as to how those responses. So it seems as though customer service would improve it. If I'm having an issue and I'm dealing with an agency, how it's responded to me would determine the whole outcome of the conversation and where I am. And I wanna thank um, the ladies that came to actually voice their opinion because although we had two show up, there's at least another 20 that felt the same way but just didn't find enough hope to come and share those concerns with us. So I don't, I'm, I'm like uh, uh, Commissioner Flowers, numbers mean a lot, but that's just a small sample. And, and, and as a council person, I've always, I've learned that a lot of times when we have people come to address us, you know, you see that picture with the tip of the iceberg and that uh, under the, we don't see all that other stuff. We see that nice little package, little iceberg right up top, and that's what we're basing a lot of our decisions on. So we have people come and make these presentations, and, and although we did get the presentation, we did vote on it, the reality of it um, is, is what's important. And I've also learned when people say we're working on it, that means that then it's whatever they're working on, it's another two to three months before we'll see a result. So this is not just detailed to this particular instance. So I completely concur with wanting to have, that was one of my notes, was three to six months. Um, I don't think that that is, is for me, that I don't think um, would work. And in a contract, and maybe someone can help me with this, in most contracts that we've dealt with, there are usually a timeline of penalties for missing dates and benchmarks. Is this not one of those cases where we need to re-examine contractually where we are because I totally agree with Commissioner Cox. If we paid for it, if I pay for a year of cable or a year of, of telephone, I want my service for the whole year. And so we need to be good stu uh, stewards financially um, to ensure that we are spending those dollars correctly. Even if, you know, and Brad, I appreciate you also, you know, falling on the sword, but nobody returned any checks. So there should also be some ethical compliance to wanting to make sure that we're receiving and that our customers are receiving um, the services that we as board members are publicly sharing that we're doing in representing PSTA. Because at the end of the day, whether it be Stair, First Transit, whoever it is, PSTA is the one that's going to take uh, the account, is going to be held accountable for that. So that was one of my questions. Um, and also on the, the complaint cards, when we're looking at the complaints, those that are having is, uh, um, continued issues, can we please flag those customers to make sure that we address um, them? Because although we have one person here complaining, when they get in their circle, that's a complaint that can impact us as well. So we need to be able to um, address that. And when I looked at the new access structure slide, the first thing I wrote down was accountability. I saw a whole lot of logos. How are we gonna hold each and every last one of those partners accountable, I, that I need to, to hear. And I also wrote down this quote, have been some challenges. Um, Commissioner Flowers hit the nail on the head. I come from an IT world. And on one of our contracts, we had to run daily job streams. And if our job streams, if my time's job streams were not complete by 4 p.m. that day, every hour, my team was charged $100,000 penalty to get it done. I don't see why this should be any different. I don't see why this should be any different. Um, <clears throat> I'm, trying to, I'm looking at my notes, because everything else is, is, was already said. But the majority of it, again, I want to know about the timeline and penalties and how we can address that. 
and I also want to know about the the clients. When when they call in to to set rides, um, is the dispatcher <coughs> identified by name? Um, when when they call in, our reservation agents uh, identify themselves. Okay. In most cases. Okay, and so all those calls are recorded, right? Yes, they're all recorded. So on the complaint cards, do we have ac do do we have access to find out who they talk to and who they work with? Yeah, if we know what time uh, the customer called in and the phone number they called in from, um, we can try to look into it and find the, the specific call. Okay, so I, I really, the word try is vague, so I would really like for us to look into that. Um, if that is, is um, if that's feasible, I just wanted to see what else I had to do. What about, okay, then also I have technology, and um, it says that a lot of them want to play with credit cards. Do we know that to be thorough? Because we have a lot of clients that are still real old school. So how have we surveyed the clients in their preferred method of payment we have? Yeah, um, I don't know if that's been like a, a survey question, but a lot of the riders that I've spoken with, um, they, a, you're right, a lot of riders do like to pay with cash. A lot of them like the tickets. But um, you know, having a family member put a credit card on file so that they can take trips or a facility putting a credit card on file, it's been something that we've been asked multiple times. So uh, we have that for the Mobility On Demand program. That program is completely cashless. So all the riders um, have either a debit or credit card put down. I know lots of the riders wish they could do that for their pre-scheduled trips as well. Okay. We, we have heard that. So I would love to, to have um the writers, the, 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 our, our customers, to kind of give us a solid indication as to if that's something that we need to focus on. And my last comment will be, um, and I totally agree that when we when we get out, um, and I can promise you that when the presentation was made to be selected for the proposal, all the bells and whistle, whistles were put out. And again, I make that statement that I've learned since being on council. Everyone puts their best foot forward until it's time to make that first step. So when, when hearing Commissioner Cox in regards to <coughs> the delays of time and, and hearing, you know, again, Brad falling on the sword, I get that. But could we not, in the interim, and while I'm waiting on the timeline in regards to penalties, and I understand Commissioner Cox said we were able to, we had a, a plan B because any organization should have a plan B and a plan C because our customers should not know that we're going through a transition. We shouldn't take them with us, as painful it may be sometimes. Is there a plan B if we cannot get some resolve within the next 30 days? Um, so I think a plan B in terms of software as that we can go back to, I don't think that we have a an immediate anything that we can fall back on. I, I really think that uh, we are making a lot of progress with this FAIR platform, and I, I really think in the next 30 days we're gonna see a lot of progress. Um, you know, if things don't work out, I think that in the next 30 days is we can come back and, and look at other options. So if we have to come back in the next 30 days and we don't have any other options, we definitely need to renew that, con re re that contract. Um, there's just no ifs, ands, and buts about it. The contracts need to be renewed because if you, if you put yourself out there in an arena as to be an expert to bid out your services, you're supposed to be prepared to handle all options. You're supposed to, when you put your, your, your proposal together, to know what that customer is currently providing and to say, I can do it better. You have to know what better is and you have to be able to come through with that. And I think when we took that vote, we took that vote of encouragement that you would do it better. Um, so to, to hear that there's not a plan B or a plan C, that's on us too, especially in this day of technology. You know, you put your, your money in a bank and because the light's out, you can't get your funds, you're not gonna be too happy about that. You know, there has to be other alternatives um, in serving, especially I also sit on Pinellas County Council for Persons with Disabilities, so you know this is near and dear to me for us to have, you know, our, our customers come and can't get to and from. We can just get up and walk out this door right now, every last one of us in this room, because we're not held bound by 
the need of others. So I just want us to just make a note of that and please um, identify the comments as feedback and recommendations, not as criticisms of your service because we do appreciate you and what you're trying to do. But as a, a board member, I just wanna make sure that everyone is on the same page in providing adequate and, and satisfactory service. Thank you, John. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Albrighton. Yeah, you know, I, <clears throat> I started seeing emails a few weeks ago on this and it was disturbing. Um, and I'm glad we're having this talk today because everybody needs to work together on this if we want, you know, when we first, when the board uh, talked about um, Care Ride and, and then going into this new um, um, ride system, I thought, again, that you all uh, beautifully said that we were excited thinking that it was uh, really going to be faster and better and was really going to give everybody, the public, a better uh, service. And then to hear this today, uh, well, I started with the email, there were a couple of ladies that I, I saw come through, um, to see that we have this much of a problem. Now, I didn't realize that we actually delayed it back when was that, Brad? November or October? October. Uh, with now, so I understand this. Was that was that the software, the communication software that caused yes. you to delay it? Well, no, it was the the opening up of our new operator, our new provider of transportation services, First Transit, on July one. Yeah, and. It was, it was my opinion, with the recommendation by First Transit and others, that also rolling out the new software at the exact same time would, would not be a good idea. It would be just too much for a, to bring in a brand new contractor after 25 years with another contractor on the same day as rolling out the new software. So I, I made the call to hold off on the, on the software implementation until the fall. And so everything was manual. Started out manual. Well, we did, they did use a software system, a, a much more manually oriented system as, as a stopgap, yeah. yeah. All right, so that's when you had the problems with the issues with the driver's brakes and scheduling and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question now, I mean, I have the same concern. I'm not ready to wait three months to get this back on track. I mean, we need to do it fairly quickly. Um, so. Do we have the software? I mean, is everybody feel comfortable using the system we have that you think you can get on top of this in 30 days? I mean, I know you said third, you know, three to six months, but that's wait. I mean, I hope it can be done in 30 days. That, that, that would likely be a, a question for Spare, not, not for First Transit, because we don't do the actual changing of the software. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, I'm more than happy to look at how we can make sure we hit some of these objectives in a, in a, in a speedier fashion. I, I would like to note though um, that I think there was some comments around, we're also happy to provide some data around the different uh, KPIs that we're tracking against this. Uh, there was some comments made earlier around what are the what are the historical complaint figures? Just briefly looking at it, again, I can come back to exactly. Uh, historically, over the last, since July of 2021, there's been around 20 to 25 complaints per month on average. And this, uh, this month in March, we are currently tracking to around half or a third of that. So things are already looking pretty positive on, on that uh, metric, but, um, but yeah. And, and how many total rides you have a month? 27,000. 27,000. How is this what it is, this um, February? Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so yeah, um, the complaint rate is 0.0009% of rides. <laughs> well, I guess we need to look at that way, but still, I mean, it's a valid complaint that spare, especially with paratransit people. I mean, gosh, to wait 
that long and then to feel helpless. I mean, they're much more helpless than anybody else. So um, what I'd like to do, my input on this, and I'm not gonna repeat everything everybody said, but I'm in agreement. We need to do this quickly. Uh, I think we need to get another report for next <coughs> month and the, have the full board review it, yeah. see where we are. So that's my input. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Cox. Thank you. Yeah, to address what Mr. Miller said too, <coughs> also when the, when we found out that route match couldn't do what needed to be done because, and I'm not saying it was Fair's fault, I, I take that back, that's what I was taught anyway, that Fair wasn't able to be on board quickly enough, I didn't know you made that decision. Um, but what we did, which was successful, is we went back to the provider that was used for so many years, which was Tramway. And Tramway, the people that are at First Transit now are very familiar with this software. And it's a software, when somebody gets ready, they can call in, it can be directed right to a dispatcher, and that dispatcher can change the route. Now they can't change a route, you know, if somebody gets ready. And that's where you go where Ms. McSherry said she waited four hours, and 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 it th that's not uncommon. It's happened more than once where people have to wait on it. So in my opinion, it's it's a good good thing that we're taking action on this, like immediate for immediate action. But a, a three to you know a th three month delay is not not good. So it almost seems to me that it would be worth the money to use that as a backup. I don't know how that would be arranged. I don't even know if they're available, you know, if, if um, Framware is available and as a backup until they can get, Spare Labs can get this fixed where there's an ability for First Transit to be able to control their drivers and their customers. And they just don't have, they're just gonna sit back now and wait for a phone call from a, a PSTA operator saying where's the trip and then they can't really route it right back out. You know? And so what we're doing there is we're doubling our, our, our time where we're having a, a person having to handle a complaint that's a paid employee, plus we're not getting the person picked up. So that's my suggestion. And I thank you. I thank everyone for your time on this. Too. I know I'm a little long-winded. All right, um, so Thank you all. The, uh, the The benefit of going last is I don't have to say that much. Everyone's already said <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> if you were at the prior committee meeting, I was not the chair, so I spoke a lot. Um, I did want to bring up something, though, that I haven't heard yet, um, and that was around training, um, both uh, on the dispatch, the customer service side, and also the driver side. We heard some comments that, that talked about uh, personal experiences with, with the driver and use of uh, equipment or not use of equipment. So uh, I guess I, I have a question for us here. Is, are, are we responsible or we take part in the training of drivers with some of our vendors? Or is that, per, is that purely on the, the vendors to provide that training to drivers? Well, it is different. We, we, we are not directly involved with the training of contracted employees, uh, but we do have in our contracts, in, in our in our contract requirements that outline our, uh, you know, sort of training minimums all over the place. First Transit, um, Barrier Metro, and all have to comply with. Okay. But yeah. Each each entity has training um, training processes that we review and approve. That's how that works. Okay. Uh, well, then, given that, are there thoughts from our, our vendors here on on what they heard regarding? Uh, the drivers and possible training? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that I worked at CareRide for about eight years. The safe, uh, we had a, a one-man safety team, if you will, that, that did the training. At First Transit, they have a safety team department. They have extensive training. The driver goes through 36 hours of training um, before he's put out on the road. Then he's monitored for two days um, to make sure he's properly trained. Uh, the training at First Transit is far superior than CareRide. 
the other thing is we, we provide belts, we provide all the equipment. Anyone that's not trained, um, they are retrained, any kind of violation. We also have drive cams, which we did not have <laughs> at, uh, at Care Ride, inside cameras. Any, any uh, client or a passenger that has any type of complaint, we can, we can go back and view the history of that. We can see who did or did not put on a, a posy belt or restraint, hook up right. We have that ability. And, and we have used that to our advantage. So, um, and, and it even um, has a, uh, a voice that says you're, you're driving too fast, you're driving too close. Um, you've crossed the white line, you know, on a street corner. So um, if there's ever any type of complaint, we, we welcome the feedback from that passenger so we can address it. And that driver will go through retraining. Okay. Well, and understand, you know, my, my position is not one to be, uh, to, to criticize. Um, it's really to find an opportunity to improve. So, um, and, and hearing those comments directly from, from some of our riders, it warranted the question. Um, and I know we do that with our own with our own buses. Um, the uh, I had a lot of questions about the API and who's using them and, and other things, but I'm going to let let that just kind of unfold as as uh, we move forward. Um, one of the things I also did have a question. This goes back to our, our actual vendors here, um, and you made some comments earlier. But can you share what the driver experience has been? With, with using spare um, or and, and the dispatch service are, is it you know what is there a wish list of things that, that they could do to help support your end delivery of, of our uh, of our transit options something that they could do differently I mean, this is a roundtable discussion so I'm hoping to get things out while we're all here that uh, so we don't come back two months from now and say wow I wish someone would have mentioned that right um. The, the, the feedback from the drivers, and uh, mind you, they just go off a tablet that tells them the trips that they're going to, which was similar to, to, to Care Ride anyway, is that the, the main difference is, and it's been addressed and they're working <laughs> on it, is that um, they're not really, they're, when they complete a trip, if another trip doesn't come up, they told the driver to pull over to a safe spot until our next trip comes over. Um, then um, there, there might be a delay before they, they can get to the next trip. And rather than go to the next trip that, that's assigned to them, um, there, there could be a slight today, delay because they're pulled over to the side of the road. However, that's one of the next changes that are coming up because that was a priority for us. So we feel that that will, that will be taken care of. But that's pretty much it from a driver standpoint. Okay. Um, and um, I did also have a question when it came to uh, trip prioritization. Um, obviously we know that uh, doctor's visits like dialysis and things <coughs> like that are, are very rigid on the doctor's side of, uh, we gotta get you in, we have other people coming. It, 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 it's got to happen or it's missed and it's also very necessary. Do we have a way to flag those, um, those trips as, as you know, requiring 100% on time perform? I mean, obviously we can't do 100% because the world happens, uh, but you know, making, making our drivers aware that those are, they, yeah. they, they need to happen, that there's not just an inconvenience uh, factor, there, yeah. there's a, a life factor. Maybe talk about the standing order yeah, so, you know, uh, we do have the ability to book uh, leave at trips, so where the on time is uh, the time requested plus 30 minutes. We also have arrive by trips that I'm trying to work with our reservation agents on their comfort level of booking those trips where the on time is the arrive by time minus 30 minutes. So we, we do have both. So we're trying to get more of our riders to be comfortable with booking the arrive by trips for those important doctor's appointments and dialysis trips. Thank you. Um, and I think the, the overall sentiment here, besides just more accountability with metrics of this is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, um, I think what we've all agreed is that um, whatever we can do to, as a stopgap measure to help our riders now, um, while we're working on these, on these changes to improve the overall system, um, 
we, we need a we need a stretch above and beyond uh, to try to make that happen. Because um, ultimately, that's who we're here for. Um, it, it are our riders? Um, are there any additional comments or questions? Mr. Miller. Miller. Well, I think um, Bonnie wanted to make a comment. Yeah, I you know I, I think there was a lot of comments and questions that came up. I didn't really get a chance to address some of them. As Brad mentioned, you know, we delayed the start of the spare software due to, you know, we launched with our three new contractors, First Transit, Fuser, Varia Metro in July. In addition to that, we brought reservations back in house, um, which was a huge change for us. Uh, and it, kind of at the same time, we started charging fares again, and that was a change for the clients. So wanted to get used to all of that before a new software system was brought in. Um, so like I said, we launched in mid-December with Spare. And I will say, we went through a lot of planning um, with uh, First Transit, with the Spare team. I, I will say that there's some things that we just weren't aware of until we had everything on the ground and running. Um, I know that you know with Care Ride and the Tranware software, uh, there's been similar issues. Uh, if uh, we look at historical complaints back in 2019 is when we had some of our highest complaints. That was when a new version of Tranware rolled out and it was chaos for a few days. We actually rolled it back and um, you know took some time to reevaluate and then relaunch that uh, soft new version. Um, so I think, yeah, in January we did have some issues lower on time performance. The other thing that I just wanted to mention is I know we keep saying things are going to get better, we're optimistic. I think they already have gotten better. You know, Barbara mentioned um, that, you know, her trip, which I know took place December 12th, she spoke with me. I feel awful about that we weren't able to get uh, her service, uh, that she had to wait for four hours. Um, you know, I, I can't change what happened back in December, the first few days of our launch. Um, I think our on-time performance has gotten better and better each month. Uh, like we had in the presentation, our on-time performance for February was 93%. And just last week, we were over 97% on time um, between all of our providers. So, you know, I do think that things are improving. We have work to do still, but some of the work has, has already been done and we have seen improvements. It may be more recent. So if we hear stories, you know, a lot of times I meet with riders and they'll say, you know, in December we had an issue. Back on February 5th, my ride was late. Um, I think, you know, more recently, I, I think we've started to hear less complaints. And as Christopher mentioned, uh, we've had a lot less complaints so far in March. So while things are going to continue to get better, I think they already have improved a lot so far. Um, uh, Commissioner Big Sandy. Quick question. Um, hearing what you've heard here today, is there any way or do you plan on taking some of the scenarios? Because I, I also agree with, it's, it seems like there are just so many different people that are doing, you know, it's so many moving parts mm -hmm. that it always opens an opportunity for a miscommunication, something falls through the, crack, the cracks, and it also extends the amount, the amount of time a situation can be addressed because there's so many different um, areas. Are you gonna take some of the scenarios <coughs> that you've heard today and some of the scenarios from the um, complaint issues to now follow through, because I would love to see one documented. I'm very visual. Mm -hmm. If a person calls in and this is what, what happens, and if this is what happens, and if they're late or if the car is late, um, I heard uh, one the young lady say that they lied. You know, they'll say that there's nobody there, but they just didn't show up. Is there a way we can kind of follow these scenarios to kind of help better prepare um, our level of, of, of the quality of service? Yes, uh, we can definitely do that. I will say that when we hear these issues, we need to know who the customer is and you know what time their trip was and the date. It's really hard for our team as well as First Transit to provide any sort of feedback on one time a customer had a late trip and they were marked as a no-show or you know, if, when we have concrete examples, uh, Tom can tell you we investigate every single one um, and try to provide the customer with feedback. Um, I know Barbara's called me before I've spoken with her. Um, we, we've, I've combed through her trips multiple times. So when we know the rider and their specific date and issue, we always look into it. Sounds good, thank you so much, thank you. And just, uh, Chair Schulman, just to confirm, so thank you all very much, thank you. 
First Transit and to Nick and to the um, to Christopher, Quinn, um, Paul. Who else is there? I don't know. Uh, all the folks on Zoom too. Very much appreciate the comment. My final comment will just be that on July first, as we as Bonnie described, the world changed from one 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 entity that did everything to six providers, 17 new employees, brand new employees that now report to Bonnie, answering the phone uh, for the first time, and, and a new software, all, all together. This, this is a, it's gone from golf, of one person responsible for their, to a team. This is now a team. And I'm so grateful that I've got <coughs> Bonnie as an awesome quarterback. We've got great offensive linemen in uh, First Transit, and Nick, who's been here forever as a long, very experienced manager, and Lyft, which is now providing the most number of trips uh, of anything. Before it was one entity. It is, uh, I think several of you have said, it is complex, lots of moving pieces. What I've been saying to myself over the last two months, thanks to Commissioner uh, Cox bringing this up is, okay, Maybe we do need to, is there someone, is there a part of this team that's not, that's not working, that, that, that needs to be adjusted or switched or let's come up with a plan B or whatever. At the moment, I think we have a really good team. Uh, I, I, I think we have a software provider that is, that knows the problem and is on top of it. I'm not a software engineer, I don't know, but they're, they're on it. Bonnie has calls with them um, every day, every day, and um, is committed to making this happen. It is so important, as as Commissioner Cox will certainly say better than me. We we are we know it. I don't think there is a better option right now. I mean, yes, I like the I really like a lot of the ideas that you've uh, suggested on some metrics and um, some things to look at. Be, uh, getting getting you getting all of us some information on the payment payment structure to just keep accountability at the forefront of this to make sure this gets done. Um, but if there is some time that we feel like somebody is not committed to what our ultimate goals are, or if that, that changes, then, then, then we will have to make some kind of change. But that, I do not see that now. I, I, I see a better future. Um, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I think I'll just Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so it was mentioned earlier that there was an excuse given that this is public transit. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I like that excuse. Um, I would Me just too, add this is public transit so you can expect the best. Um, so um, public transit is not a, a negative thing. It is a positive thing. And the folks in this room and around this table is here are, are here to provide the best. Um, and that's what we're here for. Um, is there any other business? I have two items, but is there any other business for any other board member? No, okay. Um, thank you, Bonnie. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you those on the big square box up there. Um, <laughs> I did wanna say, just as an aside, um, driving in today, there was a lot of traffic on 275, mm -hmm. um, but it gave me an opportunity to see the digital billboard of the express shoulder service. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, 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 very yes. excited to see the yes. sign. Very upset to not be on that bus. Um, so <laughs> I, would, I would agree. By you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it would be interesting, though, as time goes on, if we can start getting metrics. And I think I've asked about this before: is how many times the express bus is oh, actually yeah. using yeah. the shoulder, so we can start tracking uh, that service. I'm sure FDOT, as part of the study, would love to know that as well. Um, and I also, as we start moving forward towards the uh, rollout of the Sunrunner. Um, I wanted us to really start to think about, from a planning perspective, our routes as they connect to the Sunrunner. Um, in particular, mm -hmm. and I know Brad and I have discussed this, um, the Route 9 and 16, um, both of which service uh, North um, St. Pete, go down to 5th or 4th, turn into downtown at Williams Park, mm -hmm. and then go back up north. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this might be an opportunity for those routes to continue, instead of going into downtown, continue south and connect our communities from north to south, especially since we are going to have a 
on time, reliable east west connector mm -hmm. at first and first. So, um, I also think it can help increase ridership on these uh, BRT on the Sunrunner uh, as well. So, as part of our purview of the planning committee, which is uh, looking at routes um, and, and knowing that that's coming this summer, um, I want to bring that up as, a, as an option to start looking at how we can better integrate our existing routes into both um, Speed and Sunrunner as well as also. Um, connect our communities in ways that were not connected before. So that, that is a future yeah. future business subject. Yeah, field trip. Um, sounds like man, United States man field trip. <laughs> it, it is hard to get from north to south um, unless you're on the four. Um, if you're in town, and I, I realize why, it's because it, you know a lot of folks were going from north or south into downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the Sunrunner, they can now make the connection, and now we can use a more have a more express to connect the north and south communities together. <laughs> Um, which is an opportunity. So um, I'm not going to repeat myself for the third time. But uh, all right, thank you all. That will uh, adjourn our meeting for today. And I look forward to seeing everyone at the board meeting or the next uh, planning committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, 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 and you'll zoom that from the car. Yeah. And I was in person, Jesus. Oh, yeah. They go out. I'm going to be a little late. I was just told by Lena that they start, you know, Traffic and whatever. Um, yes. Brett, Brett. Yeah, I'm gonna have to.